was a jet plane? No, more like a comet or something. Probably was a comet. Yeah, did you ever hear of a comet turning around and coming back? Well, thank you for bringing it to our attention. I wouldn't worry too much. But the explanation should be quite simple. Hello, yes? We interrupt to bring you an important news bulletin. People have been asking us to identify a strange phenomena of light in the sky. At this time, we have no positive explanation. However, there is no cause for fear. We are in contact with our Air Force and the National Observatory who are checking the phenomena. As soon as we have authoritative information, we will inform our listeners. We now continue with our musical program. She hasn't been here. Why, yes, of course. Oh, I'm sure nothing's happened to her. Oh, I expect she was just delayed a few minutes. Right. Goodbye. I do hope nothing's happened to Miss Norman. Well, what could have happened to her? Her fiancé, Mr. Walker's at the station. She's supposed to have picked him up there 20 minutes ago. Maybe she's met another man. Found her home. She left an hour ago. The station's only a few minutes away from our house. I'm beginning to worry. And I'm beginning to worry that Dr. Minard will begin to worry that he won't get his beer. So let's stop worrying, shall we? Something must have... Thank you, my dear. something to eat? I would not like to eat. I would like something to drink. Wine? Beer? That. Good evening. My name's Tom Hardy. Good evening. I do not like this taste. Can I stay here? Or do you have a room? Well, I have got a lot of people coming in tomorrow. Well, I guess I can manage a small room for you. 
The rate will be two and a half a night. I have no money. I'm afraid I can't extend credit. Can I earn my keep by doing some work for you? The garden needs a lot of work. You've said so many times. I would like very much to work on your flowers and shrubs. And uh, besides, your daughter seems to want me to stay. How do you know she's my daughter? I know. Well, I suppose you can have room number four. By the way, I didn't get your name. I have no name. When a man pays his taxes, he has to give his name. Everyone has to pay his taxes. I have never paid taxes. Do you feel well, young man? Yes, very well. You sure? Sometimes our bodies can deceive us. Sometimes we think we are in perfect health. And all the while, our systems are crying out for... My friend, you have no pulse. Well, there are only two possibilities. I am drunk, or you are dead. Maybe better if I take a look first. Miss North isn't here. She must have walked away. That is possible, isn't it, Bill? Mr. Walker, I've seen a lot of wrecks in my life. No one could walk away from this one. Someone must have found her and taken her to the hospital. We've checked all the hospitals. But well, where is she? We'll get out a general alarm, Mr. Walker, but... Well, I'm afraid from the look of this... You'd better be prepared. Can't understand it, Captain. We've checked all the hospitals. Yes, the whole neighborhood. We went over it very carefully. Yes, I've made a radio check, but... No, nothing yet. I expect... Captain. This is Arthur Walker, Under Secretary to the Ministry of State. Miss North is my fiancée. I beg you to take all measures you possibly can. If necessary, a search party... I would not worry about the young lady, Mr. Walker. She's reasonably safe. Gretchen, would you please bring me something to drink? But uh, not beer this time. Captain, I have to call you back. How do you know she's all right? What do you know? I know that Miss North is not in any danger. I beg your pardon, sir, but this is a very serious situation. Would you please tell us what you do know? I have told you. Where is she? What have you done with her? Now, look here, my friend. This girl's been in a terrible accident. She's disappeared. I think you should tell us all you know. What's your name? He says he has no name. In my opinion, this man is either an amnesia case or insane. He must have something to do with Miss North's disappearance. I advise you to arrest him. Could I have a word with you, sir? Try one of these. Maybe you'll like one. Better tell them what you know, sir. They can be awfully insistent. I think we'd better take you down to headquarters. We like our questions answered.
very good. But that's plain water. Come on. You heard what I said. Let's go. I would rather not leave this. It isn't a matter of choice. Well, go on, grab him. I can't. What do you mean, you can't? No, wait. And get me some brandy, please. I don't understand it. Were you in another accident a couple of weeks ago? No, Doctor. But these scars couldn't possibly be the result of an accident that occurred tonight. They've most healed. Thank you. What happened, Susan? Can you tell me? I was in the car. Going to meet you. Suddenly I I couldn't see the road in front of me. The light was intense. The headlights of another car. I, I'm not sure what it was. I lost control of the car. A terrible crash. Like a hundred burning hammers striking all at once. Oh. I knew that I was dying. And then someone came. I remember I felt no more pain. My head cleared. I can't remember anymore. I tried to. Is that true? Yes. Why didn't you tell us before? Perhaps you can explain how these severe wounds are already healing. I helped her. I was there immediately after the accident. Are you a doctor? No. Well, I Who do. are you? I've traveled a great distance. Our craft was about to land. We needed our lights to do so. I saw how they blinded you. As soon as I set foot on your ground, I came to you and treated your wounds. The scars will disappear. What craft are you talking about? What lights? Now look here. You better make sense. I am not an inhabitant of your planet. I have come from another planet. A planet you call Venus. Wait a minute. Do you expect us to believe all this? Are you really insane? This is no ordinary man. You can't possibly believe what he's telling us. I'm afraid I'm almost forced to. Thank you, Dr. Minot. You display your intelligence proudly. Did you say room number four? Yes, room number four. Give me the Ministry of War.
Wild rumors have spread across the country that the Earth has been invaded by men from Venus. Such reports are absolutely false. Should any information concerning the arrival of men from outer space be confirmed, we would, of course, report this immediately. Our own opinion... I'm sorry, Gretchen. Where's your father? Where's your father's room? What's wrong? Are you all right? Yes, of course. What are you all doing here? He broke into your room. We saw him leave. Has he taken anything? Well, we can soon find out. Good morning. Good morning, Miss North. How are you? I mean, after the accident. I know it's impossible, but I never felt better in my life. Did you hear about me? About my leg? No. Oh. What do you think of that? He said to tell you that it was most important he drive into the city this morning. He knew you were resting well. He is the, the stranger. In the garden, working. I told him not to, but he seemed most determined. He didn't like to say anything to him. You know. Yes, I know.
Good morning. Good morning. You seem to be feeling well. Most of the scars have gone. Could you... No, I wouldn't be able to. I believe you were asking yourself if it would be possible for me to show others the methods employed for restoring health and well-being. I answered your question. I believe you read my mind. Your science and medicine will... Can you own. always tell what I'm thinking? At times. That isn't fair. Especially not to a woman. Good morning. Good morning. According to the radio, you don't exist at all. Officially, you're just a false rumor. I am inclined to feel otherwise. As a matter of fact, last night, when I got home, I tracked down an old book of mine on astronomy. Oh? Because of you, I had very little sleep. It was three in the morning when I put that book down. What was it that held your interest? I was reading about the planet Venus. I think I would like to read your book, may I? But of course, you'd probably enjoy it. Uh, if you're from Venus, there's something I can't quite understand. The book states that the atmosphere on your planet is radically different from that of our Earth. Our atmosphere for you would be like us here trying to live underwater. That is a reasonable comparison. Many months before our actual takeoff from Venus, elaborate preparations were begun. As a part of that preparation, I spent 12 consecutive days conditioning my respiratory system to your atmosphere. This is not a simple task, physically. Your respiratory system has been completely changed? No, not at all. The effect was to create a temporary tolerance to your atmosphere and a temporary adaptation to permit me to exist under these conditions. Do you realize, for example, what a large part of what you call fresh air is simple dust? Dust? Without it, you would find it extremely difficult to breathe. Scio nescio. Socrates said that. What does it mean? I realize that I know nothing. <laughs> well, I must be off. I'll see you later. You said your body was adjusted to our atmosphere only temporarily. What did you mean by that? In less than four days, 100 of your hours, I will leave before then. How? The way I came, my people will be returning. If they're late, if something should happen. They won't be late. Sorry, sir, you won't be allowed to drive through. Oh, what's the trouble? Road repairs? That's right. Oh. Well, uh, I'll take the other road back at the crossing. Just a minute. That road is also closed. I'm afraid you won't be permitted to leave the area. But I'm a doctor. I've got a patient to attend to. Well, it's nothing very serious, you Give but... me his name and address. We'll contact another doctor for him. We've blocked this whole area. No one is allowed to leave or enter. So that's what you're trying to do. Build a prison around it. Don't try and sneak through the woods. We have our orders. Well, I suppose I need a little peace and quiet. <laughs> I'm 
glad he didn't ask me what it was all about. Do you know? No. Do you? Well, Arthur, let's see this monster of yours from outer space. Richards. How do you do? And Mr. Charles Dixon of the Associated Press Service. How do you do? And now, gentlemen, I'd like you to meet... Uh, well, I'm afraid our gifted visitor doesn't use a name as we do. How do you do? How do you do? These gentlemen are very anxious to request a few moments of your time. For what purpose? Well, Mr. Dixon is a world figure in the field of newspaper journalism. And you're chief of police? I would like to extend a word of welcome. And then? I'd ask if I may make a simple record of your fingerprints. Purely a routine matter. Fingerprints? It's probably a technique your people don't employ. Now, Mr. Richard, shall I take my prints first to show our visitor what we mean? Very well. Good idea. Now, if you please. I think you might be disappointed. I don't think so. You think this will work with me? Let's just say I have a suspicious nature. I can believe what I see. These are not the fingerprints of a human being. I'd very much like to ask you a few questions. Go right ahead, Mr. Dixon. I suggest we go to your room where we can have privacy. I suppose we've got to wait until we read about it in the newspapers. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but this story can't be released until it's been cleared by our government. Your excuses, Mr. Richards. We are able to save considerable time. I'm a little surprised that you speak our language. We are able to converse in all languages. Are they taught in your schools? We do not have schools as you know them. Our methods of learning are quite different. In what way? In order to know a subject, we must concentrate on it only once. You speak our language very well. Thank you. It is not difficult for us to transpose our thoughts in any of your languages. Would you be willing to demonstrate that? Gladly. Would you read this article in Spanish? 
Una demanda formal ha sido sometida al Departamento del Interior solicitando ayuda gubernamental. And now, will you read the next part in German? Durch das Acme Fortuna Projekt wurde beschlossen, dass das Transportieren von Öl per Bahn nicht ökonomisch ist. And now, French. Les ingénieurs sont d'avis que la seule solution c'est d'avoir une conduite à partir des puits de pétrole jusqu'à la raffinerie. Now Russian. Eto značitelno umenčito renja i stojemo sterevovski. I will finish it in Italian. Si prevede que le spese potrebbero essere amortizate dopo due anni di funzionamento. Is your native language similar to any of those? Like none and yet accomplishing the purpose of all. We very seldom communicate by speech. Instead, we transfer thought. We achieve complete honesty in that way. No one is ever misunderstood. How is it you're so familiar with the Earth, its languages and people? For many years we've been watching you and listening to you. How's that possible? Through your own radio and television. In the vacuum of outer space, there is nothing that can hinder the travel of your broadcast signals. But we have been tracing your planet civilization for a long time before radio in other ways. We've been amazed and amused at your behavior. Your fumbling attempts to solve your national and international problems remind us of our own early history. We haven't found the answers to all our problems yet. That remark brings me to the purpose of my voyage here. Our problems? Precisely. But how could our problems affect you? Problems of war and survival are very important to us. As to the discussion of the topic, I must leave it to my superiors, who shall arrive on Earth in a very short time. Are the men from Venus? Please do not be alarmed. Their mission is strictly a peaceful one. The landing will come in two days. I'm here to prepare their arrival. We can inform the world of that through our newspapers. I am not concerned at present with the people of your nations. I must make this preparation through the heads of the various governments. You want to meet representatives of all nations? Yes. At one time? Yes. Within two days? That is possible. It wouldn't be easy. The urgency of the situation demands the effort. We know what you want. Leave it to us to get things started. I'd like to come back a bit later, if I may, to ask you a few additional questions. Certainly. I count myself honored to have been one of those present at this meeting. You understand my sincere desire to have this meeting arranged within the next two days? I certainly do. I'll do my best to help. Well, he's the real thing. I wish I had half that man's knowledge and experience. I usually hate people who know all the answers. But I like him. He makes you feel like a moron, but I like him. What does he want from us? It's not what they want from us. It's what we can learn from them. Don't fool yourself, Arthur. If you think you can outsmart that man with your diplomatic charm, I'd say you're wasting your time. In two days, a spacecraft will land here on our soil, a craft that has traveled millions of light years. To achieve that, do you realize how tremendously advanced they must be? We could make fantastic progress through them. I don't think they're coming here for that. You never know.
there. That's the spot I mean. It is very beautiful. It's my secret. I come here when I want to be alone. Doesn't Arthur share the secret? No, he doesn't. Do you like Arthur? Not yet. You're staring at me. It isn't polite. When you return, you'll probably tell your people very silly things about us. That's right. <laughs> what will you tell them about me? I might not tell them anything about you. But if, if you did, what would you say? I would tell them that you're very quiet and very warm that your eyes are soft and sensitive, and that your character is deep and filled with meaning. I don't think I believe that. You should, Susan. Uh, I ought to be sorting out my lines, getting my tackle in order. Oh, I'm an unhappy man. I've got the whole summer to fish for trout. What's a few days? Young man, I have been fishing for 23 years. I've never yet missed opening day. It was the first time. Barbarians. Mind if I take your hand over, Doc? Oh, no, not at all. Are you my friend? Yes, of course, Doctor. Then will you kindly get me a fresh cup of coffee? You didn't think so when I first showed you. Oh, uh, may I speak to you, please? I'm sorry to come so late. I lost quite a bit of time trying to get past the road barrier. Road barrier? Well, I... I am a bit behind on my time schedule. Could I make one brief call before we talk? Certainly. Thank you. Western 550, please. Who is this speaking? Charles Dixon. Who are you calling? Calling my editor. You'll have to get authorization to use his telephone. We have orders. Oh, all right, forget it.
What is the reaction of the public to my being here? The public doesn't know you're here. They've instituted a full-scale news boycott. I haven't been allowed to print a word about you so far. But our craft, someone must have seen A few scattered reports of your landing have been dismissed as hysteria, false gossip. It's important that the news of your arrival should be kept under control until an official announcement can be made. Uh, someday soon, this story will be released. I came back to ask you a very important question, if I may. Yes. I should be very interested in anything you can tell me about the power plant on your spacecraft, in simple terms, if that's possible. Gretchen, would you please bring me that bulletin board? Perhaps I can explain visually with this. Can I listen? All right, sit down. Each of our planets has its own magnetic forces. These magnetic fields of attraction extend through space in varying degrees. As you know, two similar magnetic poles repel, whereas two dissimilar poles attract. What you refer to as a power plant on our craft is simply a highly developed mechanical device which a choice either pushes or pulls against these magnetic fields. A sensitive apparatus, but very simple. No fuel, no motors. That is correct. Hmm. Now, if you will excuse me. This story should make astounding news copy, if I can ever release it. Thank you. Good night. Good night. sent this suitcase. Oh. Said you'd find whatever you want while you're here. Is that? What about a nightcap? Right, Tom, can we have some drinks, please? I bet it hasn't been this quiet here in a long time. It certainly has not. What do you want, whiskey and soda? Whiskey. Two, please. Could you arrange something for me? Something important? Well, of course I will, darling. If I can, what is it? I realize that orders were given for no one to leave this area, but could you make an exception in my case? You could arrange it if you tried. I'm sorry, Susan. I'm sure that would be impossible. But you can do the impossible. You know that. In this situation, darling, there can't be any exceptions. This whole event must be the world's best kept secret. You don't trust me? I trust you completely, darling. But there are others. People who have tried to reach anyone who knows anything about all this. They've tried desperately to pump for information. Aren't you making this sound just a bit dramatic? You don't know what's been going on outside. People have calmed down, all right. They believe what they read in the newspapers. But the governments of other nations are very inquisitive. But my home is only ten miles away. You can order a policeman to guard the house, but please let Why me... Why are you so anxious to get away? Is it because of him? Are you afraid of him? Yes, I am. There's no need to worry, darling. If I thought there was any possibility of his trying to harm you, I'd have taken steps to prevent it long ago. Besides, I should be here from now on. It will all be over very soon. Would you like to know what I think? 
The arrival of this stranger, this man from other worlds, is probably the greatest opportunity our world has had in a thousand years. And shall I tell you what else I think? You politicians won't take advantage of it. You'll ruin your only chance. I'm willing to bet on it. Dr. Maynard, when I'm sick, I call a doctor. I have no training in medicine. Funny thing with politics is that people always think they know better than the people who are doing the job. The horrible thing is that they often do. Look, Arthur, I'm awfully tired. I'm going to bed. I'll carry a case up for you. Uh, sorry about the way I spoke. It's all right. We're all a bit on edge. Hmm. Good night, Susan. Good night. Gretchen. Do you think I could have something to eat? Well, it's a little late. Oh, just something hot. Could you, uh, could you make some soup? No, I'm afraid not, Doctor. A couple of soft-boiled eggs? Well, I suppose... Some buttered toast? All right. Some marmalade? A little coffee? Oh, I should have known. <laughs> the eggs, three minutes? Two minutes and 50 seconds. Oh, uh, three minutes. Sleep well, darling. Perhaps we can have breakfast together in the morning. Arthur, you have to arrange for me to leave here tomorrow. I've already told you, darling, why that's impossible. It isn't impossible. You haven't even tried. Let's go inside. Arthur, that man, I'm not myself. <laughs> Don't worry about it, darling. You're probably very grateful to him. You may even be a little infatuated with him. But he's not a human. You can't judge your own feelings, but... Why don't you wait until after he's gone? Then you can either return it... ...or keep it. All right. Thank you. Good night, all. Gretchen, would you please inform our visitor that we're here? Yes, Mr. Walker. Tom, I'd like to request the completely private use of this room, if I may. I should consider it an honor. Uh, would you like me to arrange some tables and chairs for you? Please do. Excuse me. This is a very important moment for your inn. I'm sure this meeting will be of historical importance. Gentlemen, may I remind you that our visitor is somewhat able to read our thoughts? I can't see anything harmful in that. We shall put our cards on the table. I feel uneasy about this. After all, this isn't the... Gentlemen, may I introduce our visitor? And may I present our Secretary of the Interior, the Commander of our Armed Forces, the Representative of our Parliament, our Director of Science and Research, and our Government Investigator. Gentlemen, I suggest we be seated. This isn't exactly a formal conference room, but uh, in the circumstances... Is this meeting in response to my request? That's right. I ask to meet members of all the nations. All these men are from one nation, yours. Sir, it was impossible to arrange a meeting such as you suggested on so short a notice. We haven't perfected our means of transportation to a point your people obviously enjoy. Perhaps I'm more familiar with your means of communication and transportation than you realize. I hope you won't refuse to talk to us. This time I will talk to you. 
but those who follow me will only speak to worldwide representatives. The general, the government investigator. I am here on a peaceful mission. So are we. Mr. Walker, try to enlighten us about the purpose of your travel to this planet. Perhaps you could repeat your remarks for, for our benefit. I am only here to prepare the landing of our higher officers. When does this landing take place? Tomorrow night at 9.45. Where? In a field less than one mile from here. Is there any special reason why this spot was selected? Yes. The area has a rather intense magnetic field. Can you tell us any more of what your superiors wish to discuss with our leaders? Our interest in your planet is that of an elder brother. In the solar family, the delinquent member is you, Earth. We want nothing from your planet. But we cannot allow you to endanger our own existence. Endanger Venus. You're a scientist. You realize that the scientific achievements of you men on Earth are further developed than your emotional and intellectual powers. You stampede to nuclear fission, hydrogen bombs, and colossal energies must not rush ahead uncontrolled. But these powers are relied upon for defensive protection, not to start wars. Besides, the peaceful use of atomic energy foretells great progress for our societies. I am not advocating abandonment of these powers, only the cautious handling of them. You spoke of our endangering your planet. How can that be? You astronomers have discovered what you call the asteroid belt. Millions upon millions of wandering fragments, once several planets. Civilization on one of these allowed greed to overcome intelligence. You will pardon my interruption. I'm inclined to think that you greatly overestimate the effectiveness of new found energies. When one of your nations explodes an atomic bomb, it creates a powerful force downwards and upwards. If one should explode 50 hydrogen bombs at the same location, you can visualize the tremendous force downwards on the surface of the Earth. As you develop greater and greater energies, it is possible that one of these would have the impact, the effect, to move the Earth one millionth of an inch. Through the years, it grows to be miles that the Earth has shifted from its axis. The gravity of the Earth, a planet of fairly large mass, affects the gravity and position of all planets in our solar system. A change in that position could mean, well, do I make myself clear? I understand you theoretically, but it sounds hardly possible. It would be very costly to prove that I'm right. Your higher officers are coming here. What can they expect to accomplish? I have told you a little of our purpose. They will discuss this on a larger basis with all the representatives. In addition, after a worldwide agreement outlawing the wrongful use of these energies has been reached, our scientists will teach your scientists advanced principles and theories which ordinarily would take hundreds of years to evolve. You claim that the principles of motion of your craft are relatively simple. Compared to your present attempts in rocket propulsion, very simple indeed. I think we've had enough discussion for today. Before I leave, I would like to guess at what I believe some of you are thinking at this moment. If I'm correct, I would be very disappointed indeed. I think you're wondering how you might get us to reveal our knowledge of interplanetary travel. And you're wondering the same, and how you might force that information from us. Others of you are estimating the heights to which you might rise if you could personally arrange for our cooperation in space travel techniques. Well, forget it. You're not going to be told these things. You are not ready for it. Mm. 
seems quite an intelligent creature. But as a mind reader, though, he's not so hot. I'm afraid he is, my friend. Susan, is that you? I didn't know you were here. Then why did you come? I don't know. Would you rather be alone? No. And you? No. I wanted you to kiss me. Tomorrow I will be gone. And glad to leave. But of all the experiences I've had in my brief acquaintance with your world, to be with you and... Tomorrow? Oh, there's so many things I wanted to ask you about your world. Life and death. Death is simple. Not like here. You simply cease to exist. You mean you just disappear? In plain words, yes. And life? You mean love, don't you? Mind reading again. Love with us is not shortly. It is a lifetime. And a man may live to be hundreds of years. What is it? I don't know. There's something wrong. Dr. Minot. I will be all right. That was very foolish. I should have exerted myself that way. Yeah. Why did you run after that car? Someone was in my room. Yes. Police officer. This is for communication. Stolen.
let me go near. They said I'd be arrested if I didn't go away immediately. This night will long be remembered in future history. Remembered proudly or shamefully? It's the decision of our government. You mean it's the decision of a handful of ambitious men who've badly advised our government? What about our visitor? He can't exist here much longer. The fate of one man cannot be considered. You are going to try to capture our craft. That's true, isn't it? Yes. The area where your craft will land is covered with highly magnetized cables. You may not be able to construct a power plant like yours, but we can put it out of commission and pin your craft to the ground like a butterfly. My only means of communicating with them was conveniently stolen. Why are you doing this? I'm not in the position to discuss that. Then I will. You think your nation can be the first one to construct a spaceship to control the world? Don't be distressed at my revealing your plans in front of them. They won't talk. They won't be able to. They will be dead five seconds after you try this stupid move. You will be dead too. Please don't try to frighten me. Nobody's going to die. No one intends any harm to the men on that craft. This is a peaceful act. Ambushing our spacecraft? You call that peaceful? I do not understand. We came here with friendly intentions. If you people could travel to other planets, they would go with a peaceful motive. Explain to me, please, why this stupid move now? I've already told you I'm not in a position to discuss that. This isn't my idea. You said your people could take revenge. In a few minutes, our craft is going to land in the middle of a vicious trap. But high up, out of sight, a mothership will suspend itself outside your field of gravity. Another craft? A much larger craft. We hoped this would never happen. But if you people should attack, we will retaliate immediately. How? We will ignite and burn your atmosphere in a wide circle. Then we will direct the rays of the sun on this part of the Earth and immediately incinerate the entire area below. Number, please. Operator, connect me with the Ministry of War. Urgent. Don't expect too much from this. There's not a chance in a hundred we can change those plans now. You're connected. Speak up, please. Yes? This is Arthur Walker. Let me speak to Mr. Allen, please. He's talking on the other phone. Then interrupt. Yes, sir. Hello, Arthur. Sir, I've just learned that we may be exposing ourselves to disaster if we go through with these plans. Is this why you interrupt my other call? Yes. It seems they can retaliate immediately with... We discussed the possibility of all this. I don't see any reason change our plans, Arthur. But, sir, you don't understand. I have our president on the other phone. Call me back in ten minutes. Who are you to decide about the life? Hello? If I can get the communications disk, I will warn them not to land. That may save the lives of some of our people, but... If I do what you ask, you're asking me to betray my government. If they don't land, you can't survive. Gentlemen, it's amazing. It seems to be a metal entirely unknown to us. But we can't open it without destroying whatever's inside. I'm not sure that we're doing the right thing. This operation's been carefully planned. We're relying on your analysis that it'll work. We're dealing in unknowns. Theoretically, it should prove that... We're ready to test the equipment, General. Well?
Hello? Yes. Yes, he's here. Dr. Minard, it's for you. Thank you. Hello. Oh. Oh, Mrs. Sanford. Yes. few minutes for all of us. And I just prescribed five days complete rest for my prize hypochondriac. <laughs> Dr. Mine. Hmm? Yeah. Is that? No. The mothership. My biggest scoop, but who'll read it? General, I am partly responsible for this operation. But right now, I'd prefer not to pull that switch. You should have thought of that before. I'm only a soldier who's got a job to do and who obeys orders. When that craft is exactly 14 feet above the ground, that switch will be pulled. Well, I'm inclined to believe that everything Walker told the Minister of War can be true. In which case, though, probably blow us to bits. Altitude 1,000 feet, descending. Five hundred feet. We've no right to gamble with other people's lives. Don't throw that switch. Stay where you are, or I'll be forced... Four hundred and fifty feet. Prayers were heard. You faced a great decision. I'm proud of your men, Susan. I think he'd want to be alone. Mm. 